So I head up marketing for the analytics platform. Leaders are looking more and more at machine learning, at cognitive systems, and of course the new paradigm where the algorithms themselves will learn and help propose or even decide automatically the best action to take. IT infrastructure today, when you look at data and analytics, is very complex, it's usually siloed. Some data is in a data warehouse for two or three departments, but it's not easily shareable with another department. When I want to interact with data, it's incredibly complicated. We want to make sure that people can extract that value of data and apply it to their business. The sooner that you can put the insight that you've gained from that data into action, the quicker the outcome. So where time is critical, when we're looking to move to real-time analytics, that speed time of value to data is important. When we talk um, to clients about analytics or getting better insights to drive the business, we will blur the lines between our internal silos. We open sourced our system ML intellectual property to the Spark community. The data scientist is very skilled in the algorithm that they want to produce and the insight they want to gain. And since System ML is an engine and not a library of algorithms, it takes on the burden for that data scientist to do the optimization for it. The big business value that System ML is delivering to the community is it allows Spark to have some business domain level extensions at the machine learning level to be made available for everyone. Executives sit up in their chair when they understand that they can get the pulse of what people are talking about with their brands and with their company and with their services. What just happened here is we have about nine days at the moment of Twitter data, which is 373 million tweets that we just processed while we watched that happen here in real time. You have 1,400 users in this particular case who are talking about IBM. Tell me about them, who are they? We see Spark making it easier to access and work with all different types of data. We see it as that unifying interaction place where data savvy people can get at data wherever it sits, apply models to it, and then have the way to work with the application developer to place that insight into an application. So we intend to definitely use Spark as the underpinning um, or enabler of our analytics portfolio as well as our commerce. You couldn't imagine all the different types of innovation. This example was to use Spark to look to bring down a genome sequencing to 50 bucks a go. We are the largest contributor to Big Data University. August 10th, we announced a scholarship for advancing women in data science. We announced um, the foundation of the Spark Technology Center. It's based in the, the heart of what is now the innovation in Silicon Valley, which is San Francisco. The Spark Technology Center is fundamentally designed to put the community first. As Steve mentioned, we only had did two before, uh, Java and Linux. We aim to be the number one committer to Spark. We launched in June with the saying that Spark is the start of something big in data and design. And just from seeing what the R&D team have done, what our partners are doing, um, as the saying goes, we ain't seen nothing yet.